It doesn't matter if you're someone that just has an aquarium in the corner that you like to keep as a decoration, or if you're a person that completely obsesses over fish keeping like me and all of you probably do, there are certain things that we believe every fish keeper should have. If you don't have everything that we list off here for you today, we highly encourage you to get all of these things because it's gonna make your life so much easier and make life easier for your fish. We put out a new episode just like this every single week. So if you like this kind of content, click the subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified when we put up next week's episode. With all that said, let's get into it. Here are the 10 things that we believe every fish keeper should have. Aquariums are not a set it and forget it type thing. They require work to keep it looking nice and also provide a healthy environment for whatever you have living in there. There are certain tools that you should keep around that are just gonna make life so much easier and make the job of maintaining your aquarium a lot simpler. We could probably do a whole episode just on this, but anyway, here we are. To properly maintain your aquarium, you're gonna have to do water changes. And for that, you're gonna want a surplus of five gallon buckets sitting around so that you can take the water out and put the water in. These are not gonna be buckets that you just got out of the garage that you use for washing the car. These are gonna be buckets that are specifically for your aquariums and nothing else. Now, if you want an easier way to do that, I would definitely encourage you to put out the extra money and get yourself a water changing system like the Python system. You wanna see a video I've done all about that, I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put a link down there to where you can buy one. Now, if you're not able to shell out the extra funds to get yourself a water changing system, you're still gonna need to get a siphon hose. This is gonna be what you use to vacuum out your gravel and remove the water while you're doing water changes. Another nice thing to have around is nets. You never know when you're gonna need to catch a fish, whether it's a sick fish or unfortunately a dead fish, or maybe your fish had babies and you wanna get the fry out of there. Keep some nets around and also, if you're using a filter that has disposable cartridges, keep plenty of those cartridges handy, new ones, for whenever you're gonna do maintenance. Think about it, you get everything ready, you're ready to maintain your tank, and then you realize you don't have any of those cartridges. It would be very easy to say, ah, I don't have any cartridges, I'll just put it off till next week, no big deal. Each time this happens, it gets easier and easier to just avoid doing the maintenance. Keep the supplies handy, have them readily available so that whenever you go to do maintenance, you're ready to go. No one likes to look at a dirty tank. Whether it's algae on the glass or cloudy water, it's just not something that we like to look at. But there are some things that you should keep handy and it'll make your life so much easier. First is sponges. It's a great idea to keep all different kinds of sponges around to be able to clean the algae off your glass and also to clean your decorations. There's plenty of sponges available that are specifically made for aquariums with different size handles and different size sponges to be able to get into those areas that are hard to reach. One of the areas that I find difficult to clean algae off of is Anubias plants. Those little leaves, oh, these are nice to have and we also use them. But one of the things you need to keep in mind is you can get sponges from the dollar store. You can get sponges that you use for dishes, regular old normal sponges, but make sure they're free of any additives like soap or disinfectants because the last thing you wanna do is put that in your tank. It's not gonna be good for your fish. It's not gonna be good at all. So make sure whatever sponge you get is just a regular sponge free of any of that stuff and use it only for your fish tanks, nothing else. That sponge, you put it aside, it's for your fish tank. Next is towels. It may sound like common sense, but I'm sure there are people out there that forget that they need a towel when they're doing water changes and what happens? Water goes everywhere, there's a great big mess, and you have to yell 
Someone bring me a towel! What did you say, Mom? CJ, not really. Last thing is algae scrapers. Again, these come in different sizes and they're great to have around because sometimes you have that pesky algae that your sponge just can't get. Again, just keep in mind that one of the most important things about your cleaning supplies is that you keep them in your fish room or wherever you store your fish cleaning supplies and you don't use them for anything else. If you have to label them, then label them. Like any other animal, fish get sick, and unfortunately, it never happens at a convenient time, but there's one thing I can guarantee you, it will happen eventually. One of the worst things that can happen is that you realize you have a sick fish that needs medication right away, but it's Sunday evening and all the fish stores around you are closed. Having some medications on standby is not only gonna be convenient, but it might also save your fish because you can medicate them right away rather than having to run out to the fish store or order them online and wait for the UPS guy. I like to keep some aquarium salt on hand. You'd be surprised how many minor illnesses can be treated with nothing but aquarium salt, but sometimes you need something a little more powerful. For those that need a little bit more powerful medications, I like to keep API's General Cure around. It treats a lot of things and then also an antibiotic like urethromycin and an ick medication, something like an ickx or a super ick cure from API. I also keep Melifix and Pemafix around. I know those are old fashioned and not a lot of people use them anymore, but I like to be prepared for just about anything. This way something breaks bad, I can react right away and hopefully save the fish. So yes, keep plenty of these things around. Your fish will be glad you did. Water conditioners are a very important product that all fish keepers should have on hand. Water conditioners do more than just treat your tap water for chlorine and chloramine. They can also detoxify ammonia, nitrites and nitrates if you need help in a pinch. Of course, you should always be using water conditioners when you're doing aquarium maintenance, but you never know when you may have an ammonia or a nitrate spike, and you need to use that water conditioner to get you through for a moment so you can figure out what the problem is. Understand this is just a Band-Aid. Water conditioners don't solve your problem. They don't fix exactly what's going on. They're just gonna help you out for the time being until you do figure out what the problem really is. You still need to fix the problem, but the water conditioner will help your fish get through it until you do. A master test kit is something that should be on your list of things to buy when you buy your first aquarium. This is a kit that's gonna test for your pH but also ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels. If you're doing research on everything you should buy for your first aquarium, the list should go like this. Aquarium, filter, heater, lights, and a master test kit. All of those things should be on the list. You should buy the test kit day one. Having a test kit is critical during the cycling process, but also it's gonna help you along the way to just check things periodically just to see how things are going. Yes, I know most of your local pet stores will test water for you, but think about it like this. If something goes wrong in your aquarium and you wanna know what's going on, you decide, well, I'll just take it to the store and test it. You bottle up some water and the next day on your way home from work, you stop, you get it tested, and then you find out what's going on. Wouldn't it have been so much better to just know the night before? Most places sell a master test kit from API for like 25, 30 bucks. It's money well spent and it won't break the bank. Just get one. I'll put a link in the description. It's an Amazon link. You can get one there, super easy. Did you watch the last three episodes of 10 Things where we talked about the biggest mistakes in fish keeping? The series where we brought in 18 other YouTubers and they told us their story about their biggest mistakes. Well, if you did, then you know there were about four or five YouTubers whose biggest mistakes had to do with not quarantining their fish. 
or plants. A quarantine tank doesn't have to be big and fancy or decorated or anything like that. The whole point of having a quarantine tank is to help prevent you from having a disaster. Before you throw any new fish into an existing tank that you already have with your most precious fish, make sure you quarantine these fish for a few weeks just to make sure everything's okay. Make sure they're healthy and they're not gonna infect your fish. Trust me on this one, all you have to do is make this mistake once and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If there's one thing that I can guarantee you in this hobby, it's that things are going to happen and they're never gonna happen at a convenient time for you. Whether it's an equipment failure, a leaky tank, or a power outage, it's inevitable these things are going to happen eventually. It's very nice to have a backup plan so that you can react right away when these things happen. One of the most common equipment failures in fish keeping is your aquarium's heater. It's not a matter of if your heater is ever gonna go bad, it's when, because it's gonna happen. So it's very nice to have a heater sitting around you never know when you might need to use it. If your heater goes out, you can replace it right away. Beautiful. Just make sure you go get another one so that you always have a backup. Think about this. You've got a 75 gallon aquarium and it springs a leak. We're talking about a glass box with 600 pounds of water in it and all that's stopping it from leaking is tiny beads of silicone. If your tank springs a leak, where will you put the water? Sure, you've got a couple five gallon buckets, but what about the other 65 gallons of water? Where are you gonna put that? This is where having a plan will help. You're probably not gonna have enough buckets to hold all of that water. So maybe think about a hose long enough to drain the water out a window or into a toilet. Much better there than on your floor. Next is power outages. They happen and believe me when they do, your fish will be very glad if you have a plan in place to get them through it. Whether it's a battery operated air pump or maybe you wanna go as far as getting a generator to power up your filter and your heater when the power goes out, it's always good to know what you're gonna do and you can do it right away as soon as that power goes out and your fish don't have to suffer. Here's a tip, if you wanna guarantee that your power will never go out, go out and buy a generator. Our power used to go out twice a month and we got sick of it, so we ended up going and spending $600 on a generator. And guess what? Power hasn't gone out since. And that's not because the power went out and we hooked up the generator. I mean, the power has not gone off, not even once. Okay, this is another one that sounds like common sense. But without water, we don't have aquariums. Your water source is something you should look into before you ever set up your first tank. Even if you're on a well and think your water's perfect, it might not be. One of the houses we lived in was on a well and it was the worst water ever. It was really only good for showering, but we couldn't cook with it, we couldn't drink it, and there's no way fish would survive in it. John had to go to his sister's house and fill up 16 five gallon buckets just to do water changes. Not only is it a good idea to make sure your water is safe for fish, but you should also think about where your water source is. If it's all the way across your house or up three flights of stairs, you're gonna dread doing maintenance. So make sure the water is safe and make sure it's convenient for maintenance. You're welcome. Raise your hand if you're someone that wants what you want right now and can't stand the idea of having to wait. Yep, just like I thought, everyone's hands are raised. It's the world we live in right now. Life is so easy for us. Whether we wanna have food delivered, we wanna watch a movie, or we need toilet paper, we can have it in an instant with the touch of a button. Toilet paper? We are so spoiled. Well, patience is really the most critical element to the fish keeping hobby. There are so many things that we really have to wait for to ensure that we're doing things right. Unfortunately, it's a lack of patience that leads to the most disasters in this hobby. 
Whether it's adding fish to a tank that's not ready for fish yet, adding fish that haven't been quarantined, or putting that Oscar in a 10 gallon tank because you don't have the patience to wait until you can buy an appropriate size tank for them. We've all done it. We want what we want and we want it right now. Just slow down and enjoy the process. We're dealing with nature here. You can't rush it. That's, that's the best advice in this whole video. Who cares about everything else? Whatever Lisa's about to say doesn't matter. That one, it was the most important. I love you, Lisa. One of the best things about keeping fish is that there are tons of people out there in the fish keeping world that love talking about fish. We're just a bunch of fish nerds. This is not a hobby that you have to do alone. There are tons of people out there that love talking about fish. They love talking about their cute little goldfish or their mollies or their guppies or their African cichlids or their discus. And I could go on and on and on and on because fish keeping is fun to talk about. Having as many people around you to share the passion with makes it so much more fun. Believe it or not, you're always gonna run into somebody that's been doing it much longer than you and you can learn so much from these people. And then you might have people that are new at it and you know more and you can share your experiences. It's amazing. I definitely encourage you to join your local fish club or even an online group. Unless you're afraid of the internet like John. He hates Facebook and that tweeter thing or whatever. And also get to know the employees at your local fish store. Having others around you that you can turn to for advice or just to share the experience of getting a new fish that you're super excited about, it will take this hobby to the next level and you will enjoy it so much more. So there you go, now you know the 10 things that every fish keeper should have. It doesn't matter if you're somebody that's obsessed over fish or if you just have an aquarium on your desk, you should have every single thing on the list. And some of them, there's no excuse because some of them don't even cost you any money. Thank you so much for watching this. If you like this kind of content and you wanna see more of it, click the subscribe button down below, click the little bell next to it. That way you get a notification next time we put one up plus we're doing all kinds of other stuff we're building a fish room right now it's it's crazy you're not going to want to miss out on any of this so click subscribe click the bell do all of that you don't want to miss out so once again thank you for watching i look forward to talking to you again next week with 10 more things i sound stupid <laughs> uh-oh i hope i was in focus there Someone bring me a towel! <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Ha ha ha. Just being theatrical. While you're doing water changes. <clears throat> to properly maintain your aquarium, you're gonna have to do water changes. And for that, we definitely want... Oh, here we go. Oh, that's FedEx. Water conditioners are a very important product that everyone that keeps fish should have in their water <laughs> Water conditioners are a very important product that all fish keepers should have and hmm The list should go like this. Aquarium, filters. It should go like this. Aquarium, filter, li oh f you.